Choosing a good flight altitude for drone flights is key. Fly too high and you're going to miss important details. Fly too low and you might be inefficient or worse, unsafe. So how do you pick a good flight altitude for your drone flights? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and in this video, we're going to look at the top three things you need to consider while selecting a good flight altitude for your drone. Starting with safety. The key to any drone operation is safety. You want to maintain a healthy distance between your drone and any obstacles in the flight path. So therefore, it's always recommended that you determine the height of the structure, building or site that you're planning to inspect or map. This can be done by a few different methods, and then you can use that to estimate one of the parameters for your flight altitude. So if it's safe to do so, you can fly your drone to the height of the structure, for example, a building, a pylon, or whatever it is that you're trying to inspect, and take a measurement from the drone's onboard sensors, so for example, the drone's barometer. And this can allow you to understand the minimum altitude that you need to fly at for safety. In fact, we would recommend you keep about a 10 meter distance from anything that is, any tall structure that is present on the site. If you're not on the site, you can also estimate some of the elevation by using tools like Google Earth Pro by looking at this data before you get to the site. So for further information, you can always go to Google Earth Pro, have a look at the building or site and get an estimate for the tall structures on the site. So this will help you perform a better on-site survey for the right flight altitude. So given all the structures on the site, the first rule of thumb is to be higher than any tall structures in the flight path. At least 10 meters or 33 feet higher than in the tall, tallest structure is a good idea. The second parameter is ground sampling distance or GSD. Ground sampling distance, as the name implies, refers to the amount of ground or surface area that's covered by a single image in flight. So for example, if you're flying a mapping flight with a camera facing down, that is in the nadir position, then this is the distance, basically the amount of ground covered by your drone per image in flight. Whereas if you're flying vertically, if you're mapping a facade or a tower, then GSD is basically the amount of surface area covered by the single image in flight off the facade or the, or the tower. So why is GSD important and why do we even care? Well, depending on how big or small the defect is on the asset you're trying to inspect, for example, a crack on a roof or a facade, if you're flying an inspection mission, you can, you, you can estimate how big that crack or defect will turn up in the resulting images. For example, if the defect is only 100 centimeters in reality, and we've chosen a GSD of 10 centimeters, then the defect would be 10 pixels long in the resulting image. Whereas if the GSD is one centimeter per pixel, then the defect will be 100 pixels long. So depending on the size of the image, this would represent a fraction of the image. For a 4,000 by 3,000 uh, resolution image, this would, re this would be 2.5% of the image. So GSD and its impact on the image resolution and the size of the object in the resulting image is extremely important because it allows you to understand at what altitude, what resolution data, and therefore what you'll be able to see in the images. So as you can see from some of the illustrations, it's really important to understand the impact of the altitude on the resulting data and what you'll be able to see. If you're curious to learn more about ground sampling distance and how to calculate this, you can have a look at our other video which goes into this topic in a bit more detail. So overall, the second rule of thumb is to fly as low as possible to get your desired GSD or ground sampling distance. Final, uh, last but not the least, is regulations and pre-flight checks. Now, I might sound like stating the obvious over here, but it's also important to check the altitude restrictions in your specific geography. What is the max altitude that you can fly at? And could you get permissions to fly higher? Because sometimes flying higher can, be, can mean more efficient flights whilst getting the best possible data. So let's put everything together. The algorithm to find the best flight altitude is, first check the minimum possible altitude and the maximum possible altitude based on your geography and the structures on site. Second, in the range between the minimum and maximum possible altitude, try to select the highest possible altitude which allows you to capture your target GSD. As you decrease your altitude, your GSD will decrease and the resolution will go up. So you want to aim for an altitude that is as high as possible, but keeps the GSD as low, as close to the target as possible. This strikes the right balance between safety, efficiency, 
and data quality. So we hope this video helps you plan your flight altitudes for your upcoming drone mapping and inspection flights better. If you'd like to learn more about how to collect high quality data safely and to get, get the most out of your drone missions, feel free to check out some of our other videos. If you enjoyed this particular video, give us a like, and if you think others might benefit from it, share it with them. Um, if you want to be informed of when other videos come out, please like and subscribe to our channel. Um, we look forward to seeing you in our other videos. Uh, in terms of Hammer Missions, if you're curious to set flight altitude using our software, you can check us out at hammermissions.com uh, and all of our learning resources are freely available to you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.